Hello guys, today's subject is how to make comics. I tried to arrange the process in five steps, but I want to start with what to expect from a first comic. About the expectations, if you are a new starter and have no idea about making comics, you might think if you put out a very good comic, you can get a lot of followers, maybe with a little bit of money. It's very upsetting that that's not the truth. Since there is a lot of people who likes comics, it's a bit hard to make your voice heard. There are a lot of artists who work or study and do comics as a side thing, since it's really hard to earn money from it. Second, expectation. We can call that how long your comic will take as once a wisdom man bones mckay said comics takes twice as much more than you think so while planning you have to shorten your comic as much as possible since this is your first comic i would say do something that will only take 10 chapters don't make something that is bigger than 50 pages because while doing the comic you will learn so much and you can be sure that a lot of stuff will be different if you start again. The reason I'm saying this is if you fail faster, you can learn faster. Okay, now we figured the expectation part. We can start with the process of making the comic. I split the process into five steps. So let's start with writing slash planning for me writing is the most important and the least important part of the comic making what i mean by that is writing brings a lot of stuff to the table but execution is more important you might have a great story but if you, if that doesn't align with your writing or drawing skills it might not live up to the original story also i want to tell something about comic writing that I didn't see in other videos about uh, comic making. I first have to talk about webcomic format to explain my point. You know how people usually read their comics on their phones? You actually should do your comic for that format. What I mean by that is, you have to do your comic simple and easy to read. The plot shouldn't be complex as an average manga, anime or TV series. But phones are already distracting devices and trying to follow up a complex story from phones are hard. This is why Webtoon and Tapas feature stories that are not super complex and easy to read. So if you feel like you have a very complex long story, you should save it for a second try or like some comic that you think you will print. Another piece of advice on writing that I can't think of right now Go for something that you're obsessed about Not something that you think would be cool or popular Do something that you feel like you obsess over And don't focus plot devices that much Most of the webcomics are slice of life or character driven And even a lot of big franchises has very big plot holes so focus more on characters, not on the plots. And the last tip for starting to write. You don't have to figure out everything about the story. You just have to figure out the basics of your story. Which is called the skeleton of the story, which might sound confusing. But I will link the Lavender Towns video about this. And you guys can check that video for more information about this all right next point the character design actually this step can be the first step for some people if you started doing your comic from just drawing your characters it's completely fine i first designed my uh, characters then went on to writing but for an average person writing might come first the design is very important because before reading, 
your comic, people are going to look at your comic and decide if they want to read it or not. Your characters should represent what they are about. This is why people uh, use stereotypes like a wizard being an old white skinny man and a barbarian be a, like a giant beefcake. You should be, be careful about using stereotypes when you are drawing minorities but putting some recognizable symbols like a wizard hat will help the audience definitely the reason i am recommending designing everything beforehand is making comics is hard enough you don't want to go back designing a process middle of a new chapter more you design your needed props more you make your stuff easier for you also designing process can be extremely important for discovering how much people are interested in your OCs and what kind of dynamic people likes between your characters I will say this but I'm sure you guys already know it the characters and the background should be coherent like the color scheme like the if your characters has very sharp spiky edges the background should support that too try to search a lot and use a lot of references when you are designing well a good design is such a long topic i can talk more about this in a later video but for now this is all i can say let's uh, Go to the third point. Three thumbnailing slash panels. Well, we come to the point that I know the least, even though I worked as a storyboard artist. Thumbnailing always confused me. During thumbnailing, you have to decide your panels, uh, where your character is going to stand, perspective and speech bubbles place. Even though I make it sound like a, it's, a, it's a very hard process, usually artists give the least amount of time to it. You wouldn't think uh, you need to decide what kind of panels you need, but you actually do need to decide what kind of speech bubble style you're gonna use and decide what kind of panel you're gonna use. I would recommend using hand drawn bubbles if you're gonna make a light-hearted comic or like you have a more hand-drawn kind of style if you are um, looking for more of a serious story use the shape tool in photoshop or your preferred drawing program same for panels go for the shape tool if you want more professional look and lastly if you have action scenes don't forget to make your panels support the story because even the panels contribute to the storytelling. Panels are the step that you decide the pacing. Generally people say more panels uh, in a page faster the story feels but I think this kind of depends on. Uh, I saw action scenes with no panels uh on one page that still gives the feeling of speed because of the effects on it i mean you can still make a dynamic page without um changing the panel shape it's kind of like you should you need to study the other comic artists uh style to figure that out another thing about web comics that there's two kind of format for web comics one is the scrolling format i will um, put some videos of them and the other one is good old single pages if you want to print your comic you should do it page by page or you should uh, rearrange your panels from scrolling format which is extra work it's better to keep in mind before starting if you want to print last thing the thumbnails doesn't have to be perfect. You can always um, fix figures during the sketching process or like some stuff that is not quite right. We finally come to the 
Sketching slash lining and painting. Sketching is the fun part of the comic making. It's the part you decided everything. You open your favorite podcast in the back. You just draw the figures and add some details. Till the final bust lining comes. Honestly, when you make the sketch layer invisible and you just see the lining layer, you realize how much your art sucks. And there is a lot of tips for improving lining. Most of them requires practice. I still suck though, so... After you finish the line art, you're probably going to paint or shade your comic pages. Try to be careful about the values. Try to make your characters pop. So the comic is more readable. I keep talking about the readability because that's the biggest mistake I see. There is actually not much about uh, this step because it's very personal and depends on the person because you can just post as a sketch, you can just post as a shaded uh, black and white comic pages which is smart. <laughs> now we can go to the other step. Step 5. The final step. Posting on the websites. Our last step is basically posting the comic. You kind of have two popular websites for posting web comics, Tapas and Webtoon. You can also post your comic on Tumblr, and if your comic uh, has kind of shorter format, you can even post it on Instagram and Twitter. Let's talk about Tapas first. Tapas has a good community. People engage with your art more and leave comments. And Tapas pays you absolutely nothing, just pennies. You guys get a little bit ink here and there. And for all the months I've been there, Tapas gave me... I don't know how to read numbers. <laughs> Isn't it great? I just earned like not even 5 cents. It's just crazy. But at least Tapas lets you upload a dashboard banner. And you can also upload GIFs if you are into that type of stuff. Let's um, come to the webtoon after Tapas. Webtoon has more professional image. Their uploading system is a bit annoying. It doesn't let you upload pages in a bulk. I usually upload one by one or it just doesn't let me upload like more than two pictures at once. It doesn't let you upload GIFs and it doesn't let you upload a banner unless uh, you are featured. So yeah, also Webtoon doesn't notify you when you get comments. Maybe just sends you an email if your notifications are open. And you can't click on the commenter's profile. So you're, you have not, not much chance to connect with your audience. It doesn't allow you to put a clickable link to. So all you have is your end card. But it promotes you a little bit more than Topaz. Like I got more followers on Webtoon. I don't know. I'm letting you guys know so you guys can choose a certain type of strategy to work with these websites. I mean, I, I know it's kind of sound look negative about Webtoon. That's why I'm trying to like just know your... Uh, choose your fighter. <laughs> I also want to say... I also want to say I don't think Tumblr is dead. I still, I still think it works and brings a lot of likes. So I would actually recommend posting on Tumblr. Posting on Twitter and Instagram is a little bit up to what kind of comic you are doing. But still, you can definitely use your websites and you, can, you should use these websites to promote your webcomic. Speaking of promoting, I know a lot of people are afraid of promoting themselves. I talked about this before. I think art is communication. And if you are speaking, but there is no one in the room, you are not achieving your goal. There is nothing wrong wanting other people to read your comic. This is why I'm so open about self-promotion in my Discord. You, you can post your art as much as possible. I will link it in the description box if anyone wants to join. I mean, probably if you are watching this, you are from there. <laughs> Yes, this is it. This is the process of comic making. It's like rinse and repeat after this. You just need to do the steps again and again. Leave me some comments, I guess, if you have questions. I definitely like to read comments. I know you guys like to 
watch my video and then come in Discord and tell me what did you <laughs> leave it as a comment. <laughs> One last thing. If you think your art is not good enough to make comics, that's not true. You should make a comic, especially if your art is still developing. Because you're gonna make all those pages and you're going to have a lot of practice. And practice this is what you need actually. I am also a big fan of uh, a lot of new started artists. And I love reading those comics. Honestly, if you have an amateur comic, hit me up. I want to read it. I love that shit. <laughs> Happy New Year, guys. I wish everyone who watched this video a crunchy year. I love you all. Goodbye.